Good morning, everyone. Hope you had a good weekend. It is December 3rd, and it is a brisk morning, not terribly cold, uh, in Nashville, Mount Juliet. Um, what I wanted to talk about today is when you have a coach and the programming. If not everybody, um, I'll give you an example. I don't do Jennifer's programming. I did initially, maybe the first couple of years, maybe not quite that long. And uh, my programming and my style, although it has changed and expanded some since then, didn't really fit her personality. And I'm not gonna justify it. Uh, her and Aaron have been a very, very good fit. And hopefully, I think Aaron and I are learning a lot from each other with this collaboration. The point of all this is, one of the things, especially if you're with a coach and you're new with that coach, one of the things that I run up against is people freelancing the numbers. I'm not scolding anybody, you know, it's, that's part of it. But what I want to make you understand is as the coach is getting to know you and learn you, especially if you're trained remotely, we depend on a few things. And that is communication, video, and your feedback. And if you're not providing that, that makes it exponentially more difficult. Basically, your coach is flying blind. So find a way in this day and age, I try to, like with AppLift, uh, we have a, a chat that you can have a personal chat. There's Facebook Messenger that works really, really well. And for you people that don't want to have Facebook, you know, you can have Messenger and you don't have to have Facebook. And I communicate that way with several people that just don't want to deal with Facebook. It's also a really good way to send video, but you know, everybody's got a cell phone anymore, and so people will text. Uh, message me message me via Instagram so I try to have all those avenues open but the thing is is once you start freelancing weight then it skews our progression I'm not saying that you can't do those things but if you are in constant communication uh, within reason of course with your with your coach then you can make adjustments especially if your progress is really really good because I generally don't have people I don't have trouble with people communicating if there's a problem, but it's just as crucial as when things are going well because there may need to be some adjustments made just as if when you're having difficulty. And so you, you got to, especially remotely, got to send video, got to send uh, feedback. <clears throat> and then again, once you start jumping the gun on numbers, Remember, if, if a coach is training you, he has a plan for the entire cycle, and you start jumping the gun, it may be a great idea for that day, but it may create issues on down the line. And so those are the things uh, that I want you to think about. Always communicate, shoot an email. If you're feeling great, if the numbers have been easy, uh, I, I'll give, give you an example. Uh, Chance came in this morning, and his bench all of his bench stuff has been really, really good. And, I, you know, I'm, this is this was his first month, the first five, this is probably his fifth or sixth week. And so he's really making strides and, and communicated. Yeah, the decline weight feels really, really light. And it looked it. So I made a, a pretty, a, a healthier jump this time. Uh, the bench we've kept the same because we're adding some things and changing some things. So the progression is going to go a little slower. But he, he communicates with me. He sends me video. He illustrated how easy the weight was on decline. And therefore, it's it's time for us to be a little more aggressive uh, with, with how we're going to increase the weight. So make sure you find a method, whatever it is. I had, I had someone tell me today, well, I'm not really on Facebook. I hadn't been able to get a hold of them in any way via email, you know, or anything. So if I don't know, I can't help you. And again, I'm not scolding anybody, but what I'm saying is, is a coach is just flying dead in the water if you can't, if you don't know what's going on. And so that's crucial. The other thing is even if you're training in person is there's a trust factor. 
and you know we had we had a situation this weekend they know who they are it, it was really a good session the end result because we had some people testing so to speak is it wasn't exactly what they thought it should be and then they were really disappointed well two of them are really new and one is new to equipment so there's a process and then there's the information uh, the one with the equipment had four sessions in a row to due to schedule so the, that's where communicating on the front end even though this person is in the gym with me knowing that then we kind of we can temper some things because it's it's unrealistic sometimes you get lightning in a bottle but in general when you're training four days in a row and you're testing your deadlift you're not going to get the results generally you know that are desired so I try to tell people all the time I, I said this to Jennifer Perrier uh, who is the Olympic lifter that squats on Friday when we're deadlifting and we're really working hard to make those legs as strong as possible glean everything we can from the powerlifting and strength world to help her with her Olympic weightlifting she's got a great coach but we have a we have we do a few things differently and it's and it's made a big impact but she's going into a super heavy week and many many times we will justify our success by what we achieve or the numbers that are hit in strength and certainly that counts but what I told my people this weekend and what I told Jennifer is the measure is never the result it's in the effort that you give when you're chasing that number if you give everything that you have and you fall short that that mistake or whatever the technical error or maybe the weight was just too heavy which is what we strive for we strive that our form is so good that everything is so precise that if we miss the weight was just simply too heavy and then it's just a matter of getting stronger rarely is that the case I will take a failure with your best effort and usually that failure especially with a technical error will reveal what needs to be responded to and what needs to be addressed and improved upon so I'm all about you know when these things happen if you gave it your best shot then we'll continue working on it we'll keep reviewing and addressing and learning and and all three of these people this weekend we're still hitting PRs that that's the thing that I want to tell you you know and, and Jennifer Perrier you know squatted 220 and that, that was a big lift for her she hit a PR on the cambered bar and uh, so all these things are positive and the failure aspect I, if it stings that's fine if it if it brings tears that's always okay so long as those tears or that sadness or that disappointment or frustration isn't driving the bus going forward because we'll address it we're gonna find a way to be successful and so I just wanted to leave you with those things today communication is just paramount and you know there you got to take what the session gives you I'll say it over and over again and I learned this from my mentor Bob Schaefer the only bad session is a missed session if you woke up today and you're alive and you got to train it's a good day and sometimes the sessions I had one Friday I was pissed off all day and I let my anger drive drive the bus and that's that's on me you know and so I woke up the next day and everybody, I had a gym full of people, you know, and Melissa's training Olympic lifting, making a, a comeback to that. I got to train some Olympic lifting with, with one of our new guys, Matthew, a, a really good up and coming young man. I'm really excited about coaching him and his brother. And we had a full house and a lot of lifting got done. A lot of PRs were set, you know, and then once it was done, Ahmed put me in a shirt and I started training for IPF Bench Worlds, you know, and so it's really one of those things where you got to count your blessings and, you know, I had a tough day. I came back and hit a weight that I'd missed twice that I should never miss due to a technical error and then I came back and smoked it, but I still let it get to me and I was pretty much a horse's ass all day. And so we can all continue to learn. The coach can learn everybody. You know it's okay to be frustrated and 
you know, when we, when we train like this and we start doing well, it creates expectation, you know, and, and urgency and expectations is the seeds of frustration right there. And so you gotta learn how to cope with that because every successful lifter fails. Sometimes they fail a lot. What they don't do, they never fail to come back and keep working, you know. And I'll leave you with this. I had this conversation with Jennifer. Uh, one of her videos came up in my uh, memories on Facebook. I want to say three, could even have been four years ago. I'm not exactly sure the timeline. Probably three years ago. And she was deadlifting uh, 170 kilos, which is a really good deadlift. And she clearly was a 57 kilogram lifter at that point. And the difference, you know, between then and now, but you think about it, I wanna give you some perspective. Granted, 170 kilos at 57 is a big deadlift, but she's pulled, in, since then, she's pulled 195 in the gym and has had a miss at 200 and 2025 as a 63. Now you think, man, that's a bunch of weight but I want you to do some math. And this speaks of the type of lifter that she is and everybody that you see in the memories because Melissa's there, Wes is there, Junior is there. You see a lot of the same faces. In the, so, so with a successful lift of 170 in that video, she pulled last training cycle 195. So that's 25 kilos, which is a lot of weight. That's 55 more pounds that was three years of training so I want you to think about that because the endurance that re is required to keep digging in especially at the world level where you got to fight tooth and nail and claw and, and train and study and learn to get that two and a half maybe five kilogram increase on that lift I mean it's it's hard and you work year-round I mean, Jennifer, Jennifer's not, doesn't take much time off. And uh, it just speaks to what staying the course and being consistent. You know, training training's gonna come and go. You know, the way we do things is constantly going to evolve. But the thing that is always, always going to win is the person that keeps grinding and is consistent and consistent in all the things, the way they eat, the way they train, the way they rest, the way they study. And so hopefully you take something from this and you see the blessing that it is to be able to do what we do and to be strong, you know, and for me to be able to coach and train alongside with so many really cool people and great lifters and, and just people that, that try and, and do their very best. It's truly a blessing. So. Take the, take the blessings and take what the day and take what the session gives you. And if you're blessed enough to wake up the next day, then get after it and do it again. So everybody have a good day. Check those shopping lists. Christmas is right around the corner. All right, guys, have a good day.